Yo, 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 it's your boy, Melly Mel, a.k.a. King Jaffe, one-third of GMS. And welcome to the podcast, good people. I hope you enjoy. My name is Ashley, a.k.a. Ash, a.k.a. Sims, and I am going to have the pleasure of sitting with and talking to the fellas of GMS. If you have not subscribed or liked, please do so now. You don't want to miss out on this good time. Before you guys forget, please make sure to hit that subscribe button, like, comment, and share. Again, stay in touch with us for all updates. What's going on, guys? What's going on? Welcome back to GMS. I'm one of your co-hosts, Shahi, aka Triple M. Mm. What's going on, folks? It's King Jaffe, aka Melly Mel. We got a special guest today. Mm -hmm. What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, GQ Smooth, man. Right back at you, man. Let's go ahead and get you started. Like Mel said, man, like Mel said, man, we got a special guest. Um, this person is, a, is an entrepreneur. She has her own jewelry line. Um, she can help you in the financial department by getting your credit together, as well as improving and helping in the community with church and other projects, which she also have her own podcast show. And this is Miss Ashley Sims. Ash, what's going on? What's going on? What's going on, y'all? Thank y'all for inviting me. That was an awesome, an awesome <laughs> intro. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> of Appreciate course, you. of course. Yeah, of course. I was trying to, I'm sorry, I was trying to get my headphones to work, but I'm sorry about whatever sound y'all get. Sorry in advance. <laughs> it's all it's good. good. So yeah. good. things sound real good. So um, mm -hmm. so man, just um I want you to just state your name, where you from, where you currently okay. Let them know. All right, cool. Um, so I'm Ashley, um, Ashley Sims. I go by Sims and I go by Sims because there's too many Ashes. And I'm just only one Sim. So I go by Sims uh, if you ever see me out. Um, I am originally from North New Jersey. I relocated to Durham, North Carolina. And now I'm currently in the Kansas City, Missouri. So I done went from one side of the world to the next. So <laughs> that's a little bit behind uh, about me. Um, yes, thank you so much again for all those different titles. I sometimes don't feel that I'm that worthy of it, but I appreciate it. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm used to, I'm used to being the host. I'm gonna let you guide. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I didn't, I didn't know she was from Jersey. Salute to that. Yeah. I'm from Jersey <laughs> Absolutely. as well. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. And, and Born at Beth Israel Hospital over there at Irvington. Got family yep. in East Orange. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. <laughs> So what you what what, what I've, I've been listening. So y'all tell me. Let me tell you when I when y'all get to sports, that's when I shut y'all off. That's just a guilty guilty um <laughs> confession right there. I'm like, you know what? I can't relate. I can't do none of that. So, so. no, we're going we're gonna start off talking about you. You you tell Absolutely. us about how you got into your career field and okay. the different things that you do right now. You tell Absolutely. Us about that. Um. So when I moved to um North Carolina. I actually went to boarding school in Pennsylvania. Um, no, I was not a bad child. However, <laughs> it's a <laughs> it's a church mm. school. So my mother went there. Um, my my uncle went to another church school. So I just followed in their footsteps. Um, mm. Church school, Seven Day Adventist, Pine Forge Academy in Pottstown, Pennsylvania. Um, mm. After that, I came, graduated, came to um, North Carolina and started working with special needs children, ages mm -hmm. five to 21. Um, that right there is my heart. That's my heart and my soul. Um, I worked there for about 10 years in the city of Durham. I love every minute of it. Um, it's a, it takes a special person, um, a special type of patience to deal with that group of um, individuals and stick me there and it's like a kid in a candy store. Um, after that, um, I went to UNC Hospital um, where I started working in the healthcare field. Um, love that. I love people. Um, I was told that I, I never met a stranger. So being able to interact with people as they came in and out the hospital, um, hearing several different stories, um, dealing with children, dealing with adults, and um, being able to calm people down um, when they came to me in different situations where, where it had been an emergency or whether they family member had been in the hospital for a long period of time. I found out that was my passion, just talking to people, just having that listening ear. Um, after that, let's see, 
Um, after that, I did, uh, did part-time at Duke Hospital and the emergency department. And then after that, I decided to up and leave and move to Kansas City, Missouri, where I was granted the opportunity to work in the credit and home ownership. Um, as we are all um, men and women of color, that's not something that we were raised with. That's not something that, we, oh, again, I'm sorry, let me, let me back up. I was not taught that as I was being brought up. So let me not speak for y'all. Um, that was not something that was in the household. Yes, we went to work. Yes, we got a check. Yes, we put it in a bank. We never really got grounded on um, savings, um, looking at the bigger picture, having a goal and not to, you know, throw shade on my family, or anything like that. That's just something that my family did not yeah. practice. You know what I'm saying? Um so being on this side and looking at how credit works and how the, what the steps are to purchase a home, who oh, I wish I would have learned this when I was five. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, so that's where I am right now. Um, my, my side um, job, my side hustle, I call it, would be, yes, I do do my own jewelry. Um, I started with paparazzi, which is like a stepping stone of a big corporation. I was like, yo, I could do this. I don't need to pay somebody. I don't need to be the middleman. Let me just do my own stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, so I started that. Um, let's see. I started that, my podcast, yes, that is Good News News, uh, GNN, that I started with a group of young people back in 2016 in my church. Again, I love youth, I love people, and whatever way I can keep them um, engaged and interested, then that's what I'm here to do. So we started this little podcast with the youth in my church. Um, that got old. They were like, even, it got old because the streets was calling their name, not in a bad way, but because they want to experience, they're like, yo, Ashley, like, we love you. You, we, you my girl, but we want to go out. So I was like, yeah. I, you know, who am I? I want to do the same thing. So uh, we started that. That kind of died off a little bit. Then me and my godmother picked up. And we have been a year in now. And we have been soaring. And I'm grateful for it. Yeah, thank you. I'm grateful for it. Um, it's hard work. And um, anybody who is looking to start or wanting to start anything, do it right now. Just stop everything and do it right now. Don't think about it. Don't ask nobody about it. Don't get nobody else's opinion. Just do it. And that's it. And just let it soar. Mm, I like that. Beautiful. Nice. <laughs> nice. Yeah, do you talk about real estate at all in your podcast? So I don't talk about real estate because um, I'm still learning. I still have questions myself. And I don't want to talk about it because... I want to be able to talk to my audience. I want to be able to, um, I don't want to go uh, text. I want to break it down and I want to be comfortable in breaking it down. Um, I can do my, you know, my phone spill. Welcome to such and such, you know, thank you for calling. How can I help you? Oh, what is your credit score? But I want to be like, hey, Shaheed, if you don't get your stuff together, if you don't knock this off, you're not going to win. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I want to be able to talk real and be able. So I'm trying, I'm kind of feeling that out because some people say I, I come off a little hard. So I'm not, mm -hmm. I'm not there yet. <laughs> but I am like New Jersey in you. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> right. But it is, it is very, very interesting. Um, I go back and I ask my, my godmother's parents because my godmother was raised strict on financial go to school save your money so i have her family on the back side that i'm like oh my gosh you 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 always know how to do this mm -hmm. and of course me being the person that i am she told me about it but did i listen i'm not gonna need that until i'm like 40 or 50 no i need that like right now <laughs> you know i don't need that when i you know have kids and they have kids and all sort of stuff like we need this in the youth we need to start teaching the youth that it is important to have money or to have a financial stability. Um, and that's what we we forget. Um, and it's and to teach them that it's okay to buy the things that you want. Um, but let's think about the things that you're going to need in the long run. You know, you're not always going to have your parents. You're not always going to have your aunts and uncles. So again, the stuff that I am learning, of course, now I'm trickling down to my siblings. Do they listen? 
no. So I gotta get, I gotta cuss and I gotta get hard when I'm like, listen, if y'all don't, you know what a score is? Do you know what your percentage is? My sister's looking for a car and I'm like, anyway. So yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm getting there. It hasn't started yet, but I do see myself doing a little podcast or doing something small um, to let people know, especially the youth. Nice. That's, yeah. That's what's up. That's what's up. That's what's up. You got G. What you got, T? Hey, Ash, this is uh, GQ here. It's a pleasure hey. to have you. Uh, Thank you. Uh, being that you are an entrepreneur, yep. I wanted to ask you about how you feel, what it takes to be one. Because I know the idea of being an entrepreneur sounds great to anybody. But I feel like a lot of people don't really know in depth on how to go about being one. Because punching the clock and being your own boss is two completely different things. Absolutely. Um, being an entrepreneur... Um, is a special is a special thing. You again, you have to have that patience and you have to have that self motivation. You cannot be an entrepreneur um, thinking about everybody else. You can't be an entrepreneur waiting on everybody else. If this is something that you want to do, if you have a goal to do it, then do it. Um, I had a little cousin who posted on Facebook and she was like, "Yeah, yo, I got a business. Who's going to support me?" I said, well, why does that matter? Because at the end of the day, if it's something that's an interest in somebody, they're going to support you regardless. Um, my fear is still, and until I get over that fear will always be, I need a check every day. I mean, I need a check every two weeks. You know, that's the difference between you have to be strong enough to leave your comfortability, to go, to get out of your comfort zone to be what you want to do or um, to start your own business. You're not going to get a check every two weeks. Hell, you might not even get a check every month, Mm -hmm. but you have to be um, financially stable. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You have to be um, self-motivated and have to give up those sacrifices to be like, okay, this is what I want to do. I'm comfortable. My money's good. I have savings to to keep me going up until this point. And if it does not happen or if it's not successful, you have to be okay with that. You have to be okay. You have to be able to say, okay, I'm not going to quit. Let me revamp. Let me figure out what did not work or what is working. Um, Now with social media and, and being an entrepreneur, boy, listen. That thing right there, <laughs> trying to figure out algorithms, trying to figure out what crowd you're reaching, trying mm-hmm. to figure out if your hashtags are working. Listen, <laughs> it ain't past the CDs out your trunk no more. I'm telling you that right now. So <laughs> being an entrepreneur, you have to be mentally ready. You have to be mentally prepared. Um, I have several businesses where I started and I stopped. I have several businesses that uh, can be added to the list and I'm human. You know, uh, I go back to jobs with, I don't tuck my tail between my tail. I mean, I don't tuck my head between my tail. I don't have no type of, um, oh, it ain't work. Oh, I need like a pity party. Like who gonna pat me on my back? Like how we get up, get back. You know what I'm saying? I never leave a job where I burnt the bridge because I know at the end of the day, I'm going to need to come back regardless. You know, people, Mm -hmm. a lot of people have a negative mindset, like, I ain't never going to need you. I ain't never. I need Shai. I need King Jaffe. I need (laughs) T. I need all y'all. We done done sat here and networked in something in one of y'all or all of us that we can do. You know what I'm saying? So I will never be a person to say, to tuck my head between my tongue and be like, I got to go back. And you have to be okay with that. You can't you can't beat yourself up too much about it. And you have to have a goal. Write your stuff down. Mm. Keep your stuff to yourself. Stop telling people your business. Mm. You know, just just let it happen. Every everything that you do is not for everybody. So, that's my take on being an entrepreneur. Mm. Wow, I love it. Love it. Mm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's uh, bring me to my next question about the yeah. pandemic that affected you last year. Uh, mentally, uh, physically, emotionally? Yes. Um, the pandemic brought out some emotions that I never knew I had. Um, I know that my mother had experienced some anxiety before, but it was like minor. And I really didn't know about it because I was a child. But um, 
it brought out a lot of anxiety that I did not know that I had, and it scared me. Mm -hmm. um, I had a job, thank God. Um, I still was able to keep my job. Um, mm -hmm. However, my job went from being around people to um, being by myself, um, mm -hmm. being at home by myself. I'm a single female, so I was chilling. You know, the first week I was like, Shh, wake up. <laughs> Bond is still on, pajamas still on. Let's go. You know what I'm saying? But after a while, when you know stuff kept going back, I was like, so I don't get to see nobody. I don't get to touch and agree. And church has stopped. You know, church shut down. That was an outlet. I wasn't able to to fellowship. I wasn't able to be around. You know, people besides my family that you you know during that time you was only supposed to be around people that you lived with or knew. And I wasn't able to do that. I had several breakdowns. It scared the living hell out of me. I was like, I don't cry like this. Uh-uh. No, we hard. Like, we don't show emotions like this. Like, girl, why are you crying? Like, you just at home, eat a snack. Like, what is the problem? <laughs> You know, you called out when you wasn't, you know, you called out when you want to. So you at home, why are you complaining? So um, it was an eye opener. It definitely had me um, reevaluate myself. Um, it really took, I took self-care very seriously, very seriously. Um, it absolutely. And I, I'm always running. I kept a job. I kept three jobs at one time, which I will tell you, you know, I kept, I kept, Kept a full-time, a part-time, and a weekend job, and still doing church and everything. I always kept busy. So sitting still and letting your mind go, yo, yo, <laughs> that stuff ain't no joke. Do you hear me? That stuff is no joke. And you got people and working in the hospital, y'all. Like, y'all got to remember, I worked in the emergency department. So I saw people coming in, psych, you know, psych patients. I saw people coming in with problems and I had to keep it together because I got to take care of these patients. So that's mm -hmm. going on in my head. And I'm like, I don't want to be in the psych ward. I don't want to, you know, I got to back up. Okay. Get yourself together. You got this. We got this. We're going to keep fighting. So, you know, it, it was, it was very interesting. Very, very interesting. Mm. Yeah, that's great. That's so you, you, you've been answering a lot of uh, my follow-up questions. I was gonna <laughs> ask, me, yeah, like, <laughs> no, I was just gonna ask, yeah, what tools do you use to stay motivated? I know you did mention, you know, having goals and you know, just kind of staying busy. But I guess yeah. you can elaborate a little more on that. Like, what, yeah, as what far do you, as how do you, my how do you stay so motivated? As far as okay, just in general. As far as your jobs, just your day to. Okay. In general, yep. Okay. Your positive attitude with your jobs, just having a positive outlook on, on everything. Um, how do I stay yeah, motivated? Yeah, My it. siblings um, motivate me yeah. a lot. Um, I'm the oldest of five. Uh, I include my cousin brother, which is six. Um, and we are all staggered. Um, I do not have children of my own, so those are my kids. Um, I look at... I try not to show too much emotions because, which is bad and good, because I want them to know that we got to keep going. You know what I'm saying? Once life stops, that's it. Like, don't think that it's going to keep going. Like, you have to push yourself. You can't sit around and be sad. You can't sit around and wait for somebody to be sad with you. You know, um, as females, we get around and we want to eat ice cream and we want to cry and we want to do all this stuff. Nah, <laughs> we got to grind. You know what I'm saying? Because I, 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 my motivation is I don't depend on anybody. Okay. And I, and I do that for my siblings. Don't depend on anybody. Now you might say, well, you just got finished saying that you're going to need somebody. Absolutely. But I don't need you to pay my bills. You know, I don't need you to tell me that you're okay. I need to be confident in myself that I'm okay. I need to be able to show that if I'm sick, uh, I mean, of course, if I'm not down on my deathbed, but if I'm sick or if I don't get that promotion or I don't get a salary raise, I need to work harder. I need to keep pushing. Um, motivation for me are the people who come into the hospital. 
girl, you sitting around crying because you at home. These people are dying without their families. Mm. You know what I'm saying? You sitting around crying and, you know, upset because you want to touch and agree or you want to go out. But these families, these women are having babies without their significant other or their mother or whatever the case may be. So my, my upbeatness keeps me alive. Um, again, you know, an idle mind is the devil's playground, so they say. So I keep myself going because I don't want to have those other thoughts. You know, I, I've, I've learned there, I've learned a very powerful thing that your energy is everything. You're depending on if you are a spiritual person or the person who is more so in crystals and universe, your energy is everything and i mean that from your family to your kids to your siblings to your enemies you know whatever i give out you're going to receive it whatever you give to me if i don't want it i'm not going to take it you know what i'm saying um so my motivation is just that there's somebody who needs me to be power not powerful needs to be more positive there's somebody who is coming across my path who doesn't need me to say, dang, I ain't make no sales today. Or, you know, I didn't, I didn't get my promotion. Girl, but you got a job. I'm sitting over here trying to figure out when I'm going to get my lights turned back on or who's going to pay it. So I try to keep as upbeat as and positive and motivate for the people who come across my path. A lot of people say, you know, that's, that's selfish on your part because you still have to worry about you. And I do in my zone. I don't allow anybody to come in my zone with negative energy. That's how I recharge. I write down. I, I have a best friend who we just, we vent to each other. We release on each other. We unbag on each other. I don't do it to five other people. I just have one person that we touch and agree, whether it be a phone call, whether it be, you know, FaceTime. And it's, it's good to have somebody who takes you for all your flaws, not just a partner, but also to have a good friend to say, girl or my boy my like bruh just okay. just let me have it tell me tell me what's going on because as much positive energy that i have there is some negative we're not gonna sit here in front that i'm just this poly pocket popping yeah. all over the place being mary yeah. poppins i also have to unwind and i also have to release as well and we do that and we exchange that we journal um that's part you know self-care um, if I have to cry, you know, cause I don't want the world to see me cry. So she's the one who sees me cry. <laughs> she, you know, she does that for me. So I stay motivated because I stay motivated for my siblings. I stay motivated for the people who come in my path and, you know, the, the doors that are opening for me. I don't, I try not to bring baggage or to bring my negative energy to anybody else. <clears throat> Were you um were you uh were you always like that, Ash, or you know, did it did it did it take some time to develop, you know, or you no. know, how did it develop? So um it definitely it took time. It took time. It I never understood when females would say, um, I'm I need to go find myself. Girl, you sitting right there. What you what is that? What does that mean? <laughs> or even when a guy says, I need to go find myself. And the pandemic showed me what that meant. You know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. I keep myself so busy and I keep myself um, moving, I was able to find myself. Now, did I find it 100%? No, because I'm learning every day. We didn't come in this world saying, boom, you know how you're going to act. You know what's going to trigger you. You know, you didn't, you don't know that. So you learn yourself every day. Um excuse me, the relationship with my mom, um, <laughs> the relationship with my mom um, helped me learn that. Um, and I mean that because those of you who are from up north, you know, we got some here, we're loud, okay? <laughs> we're loud, we communicate by yelling. <laughs> <laughs> that's a fact yeah that's a fact specifically <laughs> north yep <laughs> <Right>. that's <laughs> all no. we do um yeah. and the close age that me and my mother are and the fact that i was raised with my mother and my grandmother mm. kind of played a part too so i felt like we was always bumping heads mm. but i had to realize stop trying to go against her 
Stop trying to, st- unfortunately, stop trying to prove your point. Mm. Let Just calm down. Stop trying to argue. Let her get out what she has to say. Let show your your let her show her let her show you her side. Mm-hmm. Evaluate. We got all the time in the world. Stop trying to rush everything. And then and then bring back to what you what you thought. How did it affect you? You know, and again, you have to be a native of, of north to understand a relationship between some parents and some families to understand that conversation, to understand that relationship. And it was just like, all right, mom. And then you got people like, so you just gonna let her talk to you like that? So one, that's my mom, you know, that's first and foremost. Secondly, I'm not about to, I'm not about to give off that energy. And she Mm -hmm. feels as if she needs to voice her opinion this way, Mm -hmm. I'ma let her, you know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, it's my mother, I'm going to get up and crawl up in the couch with her. Somebody from the outside could be like, y'all just had this big blowout. Y'all, y'all was going back and forth. Okay, she's going to be right here. <laughs> I only got one. I mean, we're going to go to lunch afterwards. We okay. So I had to learn how to not react so quickly. I had to learn how to take people for who they are. I had to learn how to um, just relax. You know, stop taking things to heart. Stop being so defensive. Stop stop trying to prove your point. Obviously, they're going to listen to what they want to listen to. And whatever they're saying, what you're saying is going one ear and out the other. Why are you stressing yourself trying to prove your point? They're not getting it. They're not listening because they are in the in the spot where they just listen to themselves. So my relationship with my mother um, definitely... Um, taught me a lot uh, when it comes to just cooling down Mm -hmm. energy wise and just being in my own space. Mm -hmm. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Guys, just real quick, we want to make sure that you guys follow us on all social media platforms. You can follow the group page at g.m.s underscore grown man subjects. You can follow my personal account at underscore m and muscles. Follow me at king underscore Jaffe. You can follow me at GQ two smooth roll seven. All right, go ahead, get in there, get in there, get in there. Oh, come on, y'all man, come on, man. Yeah, come on, on man. Um, look, I'm trying to figure out all my little handles. Yeah, y'all plug it all, plug it all. <laughs> <laughs> y'all can follow me at Sims Collections on Instagram as well as Facebook. You can also follow me on um, Ashley Sims is my real name. I had to change that because my job. But anyway, that's on Facebook. And you can also follow me on Ashley Sims at Instagram as well. Oh, and good news news um, where you, um, we are community based. So whatever community um, outlets you may have, any events coming up, anything dealing with the youth, dealing with the seniors, dealing with middle aged people, please let us know. We'll be happy to spread the news in all areas. Perfect, perfect, perfect. All right, Mel, it's on you, baby. It's on you, it's on you. All right, all shifting gears a little bit. So Mm -hmm. how do you feel about the current state of America? I mean, I know now, as we all know, we're all in the pandemic. Um, Mm -hmm. It's been a lot of civil unrest the past few years. Um, A new president, you know, Mm -hmm. just how do you feel about the current state? What what are your thoughts? Um, I am am relieved that um, our previous president, their previous president has left the building. (laughs) Um, Did we get somebody who was better? I'm on the fence. Um, I think we can relax for a little bit. Um, Of course, um, I'm looking, uh, as anybody, we're looking for an immediate change and that's what's not gonna happen. We have to allow things to to take uh, progress. We have to let things get into plan. We have to allow things to start to happen. Everything is just not gonna happen in a snap of our finger. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that there's a lot of hate. Um, I, I fear that. I fear the community. I feel how we come together as the United States of America, how we're so um, distant from one another. And I mean that, and I guess I don't know how how much I can say here. I don't want to have y'all banned or anything like that. 
uh, real quick, this is Triple M here. Don't report us, don't report us, but definitely make sure that you hit that like and subscribe button and make sure that you follow us on all social media platforms. All right, Ash, continue. <laughs> Nobody coming at y'all. Um, I, I don't get too much into politics because nobody knows how to have a conversation. Mm. Everybody gets heated. Um, they get heated because they think that they know, but they have no idea. They go off of assumptions and they don't go off of facts. Um, so when it comes to conversations, when it comes to the president, when it comes to um, um, black, um, I'm sorry, when it comes to police brutality, president, or... yes, thank you, police brutality, mm -hmm. um, when it comes to jobs, when it comes to the pandemic, um, opening back up the United States alone you know, people are arguing about it or mm -hmm. how the pandemic affected a lot of people, you know, people are arguing about it. Um, I think that once we all come to a common ground, once we all agree and be able to stick to our word and stop being so wishy-washy and stand our ground, I think that a lot of changes will definitely happen. Um, we have to come together as a community Um and again, <laughs> it's frustrating because when you get into that conversation, um, I always put it as crabs in a barrel. I, I want to be able to sit at this round table with y'all and we all touch and agree and leave. I don't want T to call Shae to say, yo, Ashley don't know what she's talking about. Or, oh, sorry, y'all. Hold on. Oh, Ashley don't know what she's talking about. Or um, King Joffy called T and he's like, bro, what about that meeting, yo? Like, then everybody else now got their own conversation. I think that's the problem. Let's mm -hmm. agree on something and move on. Mm -hmm. Let's stop trying to have these side conversations when it comes to our movement or our, our culture or our community. We got to stick together. And I think that's what we lack. Um, mm -hmm. So we can go, we can go on. I could go on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> about that yeah. definitely and I because I have siblings people have children we aren't going to be there as they are getting older you know what I'm saying so we got to start finding some type of example or some type of leadership on who not necessarily who they're going to follow but I guess who can help the next generation to come and I don't okay. see that I don't see that at all um, as just to, uh, you know, we got about, you know, about like three minutes left. Um, mm -hmm. you mentioned the next generation. Um, what impact do you want to leave on individuals? You know, um, when you, when you think about Ashley Sims, what is it that you want people to think of the perception of you? What's the lasting statement that you want to leave in people's minds? So what I would like to leave, in all honesty, that she lived her best life. She lived her best life for herself. She didn't live it for nobody else. She lived it for herself. She didn't worry about nobody else. She didn't worry about reality stars. She didn't, she didn't want to compare herself to anybody. She lived her best life for herself. That's amazing. That's, that's, that's right it. Yeah, yeah. We, and again, we have social media that's killing, that's killing our community, killing mm -hmm. our community. We're trying, you know, we got people who are trying so hard to be the next reality star or waking up and automatically going to social media, not even reading the, the, the politics, not even read. All we're doing, we live in life off of pictures. That's all we are doing. Nobody takes the time to read, to go back into an article, or it's not even to pick up a book. Google what's going on. Read it. Read what's behind the picture. So, so again, I'm sorry, I went off. I went off. <laughs> no, <that's fine>. I <laughs> went off. No, nah, no, nah, it's you know, you know, this, 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 this right here just represents, you know, the passion that you have, and you know these topics that, you know, we've been talking about, whether it's, you know, from hitting it from the financial standpoint or whether it's the spirituality standpoint or, you know, whether it's about, you know, the community and, you know, us getting better 
as you know society Absolutely. you know um we've been we've been going through a lot you know and uh you know i pray that everyone has used this time during the pandemic to be you know a better version of themselves you know um one thing that we can say with having trump in the office a lot of us might not like it but you know he's proved that you don't necessarily need to have a political background in order for you to be a candidate and for you to actually win the presidency. <laughs> so, you know, um, so, you know, and, and I say that and I, and I I just thought about, you know, Young Rock. <laughs> I don't know if anybody actually watched that show, man. But uh, if y'all haven't, man, definitely go check it out, man. It's based off him running for president, you know. Okay. Um, so. Uh, so, yeah, man. Um, again, you know, we uh, we 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 appreciate you coming on. Oh, I appreciate y'all. Absolutely. Make sure y'all. I, I really like. I really like this platform. Um, I definitely listen. I was uh excited about the one that y'all did about um black males going to the doctor. That that was spot on. That was awesome. I appreciate that. We are less of a man, but getting a checkup has nothing to do with your masculinity. It's just right. a part of self love. You know, right. it's. We got to take control of our health, you know, and that requires being informed about our body and providing mm -hmm. the necessary care just in case, you know. Um, we have so many things that could be looked at, looked at as signs, but we then there make sure that we are blinded to it, you know. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, um, you guys definitely keep up what you're doing. Um, I'm out here, you know, root, rooting for you guys. I like, I, I thumbs up as much as I oh can. Gosh. Again, these freaking algorithms and trying to figure out how social media works, <laughs> whatever. But um, keep doing what you guys are doing. Thank you guys for having me on. Um, and I will definitely share this um, when it airs. What's up, good people? It's your boy, Melly Mel, a.k.a. King Jaffe. One third of the GMS podcast. Thanks for tuning in. And I hope you guys like, share, and comment. And don't forget, subscribe to our YouTube channel. I appreciate you guys. Salute.